another um this time I'm going to talk about like I said um spray. Okay, so a spray is um an overstretch of uh, a ligament. Okay, and I'm gonna start um mentioning um causes and also um uh severity or um the degree. Okay, I'll start with the degree. So for let's say um grade one, um the same concept or the same um kind of structural or the frame uh with uh strain. So there's just minor minor uh, minor uh, stretch and um like tearing, right? And you know, the person will have inab uh, inability to work. Uh, although they can do the ADLs, um, they're gonna have even that they're gonna have a hard time um, to continue, right? They'll need they probably need assistance, right? And um, grade grade two, uh, there's gonna be some, you know, um, partial um, stretching, um, moderate um, lengthening, stretching of the ligament and it's gonna cause uh, some discomfort and pain, whereas grade one is discomfort, right? And um, what's gonna happen is, um, let, me, let me just check my notes here. Um, see, the degree of tear is quite variable from several fibers to the majority of the fibers. And th the same way as um, the strain, there's gonna be snapping sound. And um, it seems like the, um, the joint is like giving way. There's a term for it that I have. It the joint gives way. Okay. Um, meaning um, it's just um, it's too loose and it collapsing, so you can tell that there's no integrity um, within the the ligament or overstretch. And one thing that um, interesting about ligaments, um, how they're named, they're named um, according to the bone they attach, right? Um, so it's, it's really interesting. Not like muscles, right? Muscles are really hard to, um, you know, uh, in comparison to the, the two, right? Um, okay, so the most common areas for um, these pains are the, um, the wrist and the knee and then the, um, the ankle. Like for this one here, just because our pal pal palmar, um, this is palmar, uh, this is dorsal. This is, uh, there's a thick connect connective tissue here, um, osseous, right? See how it's stronger? So most of the sprain that happening is going when, when we're extending our, you know, fingers, right? And it usually happens here. Um, and then the ligaments, right, overstretch, right, and for the um, for the knee, usually um, it's the medial collateral um, ligament um, that is usually most affected, just because um, it's weak. And if they let's say they're gonna do some surgical um, work, um, they're gonna have to have a portion of the semi. Uh, membranosis muscle from the ten the tendon um, as you know as a ligament right they, they will use that as you know and um one more thing is that if these ligaments are reconstructed or um um i don't know the medical term um but they have done surgical ways as opposed to the normal approach way that you just put cast and let the the natural course uh, of its you know the body will heal itself. Although ligaments are uh, moderately vascularized as well, so it'll take a um, long time to heal, right? Let's say if they're in a um, uh, grade three, I have to still go back to grade three. Um, they will, you know, they're not gonna be able to work, and then for this from the surgical time, perhaps like maybe a year the surgical time and the healing time um you know if, if it's a full rapture or whatever right it's just a long time um for that uh ligament to heal and uh one more thing too so if that ligament is um 
had to do some surgical um, intervention, right? So the whole area, let's say for the shoulder, I'm just saying for the shoulder, right? But the most common um, in the ankle is the anterior, an, anterior uh, fibula ligament, right? Talofibular ligament, sorry. So, so uh, the ATFL is mostly, it's, you know, the lateral malleoli, it's just distal. If you go to some, meaning going inferior, going down, right? So that's where that ligament, and then the second one is the calcaneofibular fibular ligament. Oh gosh, I'm, I do have problem in pronunciation word, pronunciating words. Okay, so, because one more thing, um, before I forget, I have to mention this, okay? Um, so, so any, uh, any ligaments limit and, and control the range of motion at a joint, right? Any ligament will do that, right? So, you know, while allowing the motion to occur, right? So, let's say for example, um, the anterior uh, tal talofibular ligament joins the talus to the fibula at the front of the ankle. Um, you know, the ligament is thought at the end range of the motion. It prevents and is lacked both in mid-range and at the end range of the motion opposite that which it prevents. So that's very interesting, right? Um, I have um, to mention, since I'm here, the causes of sprain is a trauma-related sudden twist or wrench of the joint because it's beyond its normal range of motion, okay? Sometimes it could be congenital, right? Uh, it could be like related to... Um, to you being born with it and there's a history of previous sprains to that joint right so if um history of that if it was previously sprained um the tendency is always going to happen especially the atfl because okay so um if so if the foot is usually be because of the atfl what's happening is the foot is being um see it's the arc, it, the, it's going to collapse, right? And this one is being stretched. The uh, peroneals are being stretched, and the muscle, um, the ligaments are stretched, and it's causing that um, partial, or whatever, or that sprain, right? So this is the weak, uh, weak one, and it will cause a lot of, um, a lot of problem if this keeps on um, getting, um, how do you call it, injured. Uh, injured in a way of strain or sprain, sorry, now I'm not saying, okay? And then um, I'm going to go to the the grade 3 now before I forget, okay? So severe um, grade 3, this is either a complete rupture of the ligament itself or an avulsion fracture as the bony attachment of the ligament is turned off while the ligament remains intact. The same, it's kind of similar with the muscle, right? Um, there is a snapping sound, and but here the joint gives way, right? There is a significant instability with no endpoint on passive relaxed testing. So um, we need to uh, take note of that. If these people are seeking for any um, therapy, uh, either physical therapy or massage therapy, okay? The person cannot continue the activity due, due to pain and instability because, you know, what hold the uh, bone together is ligaments, right? So if ligaments are torn, um, the muscle, surrounding muscle will be weak. It's not going to be the integrity. Everything will be weak as well, all the joints. So therefore, I know the intensity of pain will be in the ligaments and the uh, severity will be in the ligaments, but the bone is not going to be able to have its integrity as well or its normal function because of the fact that ligaments that the two, um, the, the one thing that's holding them together is overstretch. It doesn't have integrity as well. It's already been um, stretched, ruptured in the case, or partial, whatever the case may be, right? So I'm going to go back and finish this. <laughs> I can't fix it. Okay, so I just need to add the new information. So um, the person cannot continue the activity due to pain. I've said that before, I think. Pain is present in the acute stage, um, 
and then the um, the moderate is mild discomfort or pain, right? Um, while chronic pain may be painlessly hypermobile in the direction uh, the ligament is intended to check, right? So uh, chronic sprain, when it's constantly been sprained, um, something may be painlessly, but it, it cre it's cre creating hypermobility, which is not good, right? With, you know, if a person like me, I'm very hypermobile, I really am. I, I don't do any workout or any yoga or any stretch. I'm always busy, um, but I'm very hypermobile. I'm not, uh, I don't want to explain, but I'm going to do another video about that so that we don't go over the 10 minutes because I, I am going over the 10 minutes now. Um, so the same way, um, because um, it's moderately vascularized, it's going to heal slowly. And then, okay, so other um, other areas probably, uh, that are uh, prone to it is the AC joint. The acromiocambricular joint, which is here, that's also uh, prone for um, for a sprain, right? So that's usually um, would be stretched out, right? And then the humeral ulnar joint and all the joints in the digits, right? So um, anything here, the digits, all the um, all the little um, ligaments around, those can be stretched because this one, the the fingers, our hand. We work with our with our hands, regardless if regard regardless of our occupation. Imagine, uh, uh, if you have, your occupation is doing a lot of work, like a massage therapist. Imagine, and then, uh, in their personal life or a household, being a mom, or being a father, they're still gonna be using their hands and they every day. So we do. The point is, I do. We do have a lot of um, activities that. We utilize our hands, so therefore, um, this is also prone. Having said that, it's prone to overstretch of the ligament in this case, and also overstretch of muscle in the previous case, right? But you know, and the most common um, is when when it's overstretched like this too, because this is stronger. And we're always flat. Like if you do this, like you're not really you know stretching, like right? It's like even how, how could you really stretch that? So it's more on this ex hyperextension of the fingers, okay? Okay, um, um, the, I had mentioned already about the ATFL, right? But I'm gonna read to you um, this one here. Say, um, let's say, uh, you know, for the medial um, collateral, um, right? So the it's saying that if the directed of or valgus force happens usually here, um, a laterally directed or valgus force for the knee causes a lateral collateral sprain, right? Um, although this is uncommon, um, but the most common is the medial collateral as opposed to the lateral, okay? So the same there. And anterior uh, uh, cruciate ligament is in injured when the tibia is forced anteriorly, usually when the person is weight bearing to the leg. Okay, if the tibia is pushed posteriorly, the posterior cruciate ligament is injured. So that's the thing. Okay, and um, I am just gonna uh, go through the the few testing that we're gonna do because there's gonna be some. Uh, well, we have to rule out if there's any, um, you know, some swelling happening, edema. We're going to do some uh, below the bowl, um or patella or minor effusion test. Um, we're also going to do some um, ligament, the, obviously ligamentous test, ligamentose, ligamentose test. That's perfect. <laughs> I said it perfectly this time because I'm taking my time. So ligamentous um, test should be... Uh, should be should be uh, testing the affected ligament that is involved and all the areas around it, not just that ligament. So we're gonna have to test all the integrity of the ligament. Okay. Okay, and we're gonna do all the you know the sprain ligament involved 
we, I'm not going to mention all like the deltoid and then the you know calcaneo fibular, calcaneo cuboid. And we're also going to do the aptus, aptus compression test with a check of the cruciate ligaments, right? And the menisci are also negative with a simple collateral ligament knee sprain. Okay, um, McMurray's or Braggart sign. And anterior posterior drawer test, we're going to have to do that, and Lachman's, okay? And we're going to do also the brush test to see, and, you know, val valgus and varus test and aptus distraction test. And for uh, radial stra uh, stress and passive, uh, passive resisted wrist extension and flexion, and then ulnar stress test uh, will be positive, okay, with wrist uh, sprain. Um, so the AC, um, test, uh, shear test, shear test, um, is for the AC, uh, AC joint, right? And the SI joint gapping. And then the, so you know how when you do the gapping, uh, just you squeeze it and also, um, you, um, you, you actually try to, um, how do you call it? Um, distract it. More so, so those two tests: the squish and the gapping test. And I will just mention a um, few more things before I end this. I think I need to go back to sleep. Okay, so in the I'm gonna talk about contraindication. In the acute stage, testing other the pain free uh, active free range of motion is contraindicated to prevent further tissue damage. Okay, so obviously we're not gonna do any of those active free. Because, like I said, the integrity of the muscle is also very, very affected in, in the muscle that causes that joint. Because the bone is very, it's not um, weak. The instability um, is questionable. So we're not supposed to even do any contraction or any muscle uh, contraction or any active uh, action at all testing. Even if it's um, uh, assisted, right? Only active free uh, will be uh, allowed um, in the acute phase. Okay, avoid removing the protective muscles turning of acute sprain. Uh, said that so distal circulation techniques are contraindicated in the acute and early subacute stage to avoid increasing congestion to the injured side. Okay, so with, with grade two sprains that are casted, avoid hot hydrotherapy application to the tissue immediately proximal to the cast to prevent congestion congestion under the cast so if something is swelling we're not going to put anything um hot or heat or warm so to speak right because it's only going to congest that especially uh let's say proximal here so everything will be um it's going to draw uh, like the blood to the injured area right so we we, we want to put um if anything um cool to um to get the blood away, right? Okay, uh, with grade three sprains, sorry about that. It's itchy. Um, yeah. With grade three sprains, where the ligaments have been surgically repaired, do not restore uh, restore full range of motion of the affected joint in the direction that will stretch the repaired ligament. Where the ligaments have not been surgically reduced, joint play of the unstable joint is contraindicated. Okay, um, again, joint play too, we cannot do any joint play because I've said before, the, the instability of the joint is not there, um, whether, you know, um, unless we've seen an imagery, I don't, perhaps, right? Uh, we need to make sure, because even if they're in just slight pain, we still won't, because like I said, the, um, the ligament will take time to heal, right? We don't want to over um, exacerbate uh, that, okay? Um, frictions are contraindicated contra for clients taking anti-inflammatory blood thinner, thinners. This is um, the usual um, protocol. Um, you know, you're not allowed to do friction, and that's one of the fibrous techniques that physiotherapists uh, and massage therapists uh, use um, as a tool in their therapy. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to be um, talking about um, tendonitis, bursitis. Um, and fractures uh, in the next few uh, hours. Okay.
Thank you.